So today we're going to be answering the question of what all was taken away from us in Destiny 2. So this is going to be a long one, so make sure to grab your popcorn. If this ends up being helpful, make sure to hit the like button. If you're new, make sure to subscribe as we'd love to have you. And here we go. Let's get into it. So first with Destiny 2 Year 1, we have the Red War campaign in Gaul that was taken from us. We have IO in the NPC Ashramir that was taken from us. We have Titan as well as Sloan that was taken from us as well. So some of my favorite destinations we no longer can go to. So in everybody's favorite DLC, Curse of Osiris, we lost Mercury, we lost the campaign. Campaign. We lost Brother Vance the Vendor. We lost Prophecy Weapons. Yes, there were Prophecy Weapons before there was actually a Prophecy Dungeon. Also, we lost Sagira's Ghost Shell, which is one of my most asked questions. Also, we lost the two tokens in a blue public event. If you remember, you'll know. And then there also is the Infinite Forest that is no longer available to be played. In the Warmind campaign, we have Mars that we have access to, as well as Anna Bray, who has returned since, as we know. We also have Escalation Protocol, which was the original way of being able to get the Ikelos SMG, the Ikelos Shotgun, as well as the Ikelos Sniper. In year one, we also had patrol space adventure missions as well as flashpoint public events. So back then, this was another way of just kind of extending the grind and also being able to experience some other fun things that weren't just the story mode. For strikes in year one, we lost Sabathun's song that was on Titan. We lost the Pyramidian that was on IO. We lost the Garden World Strike that was on Mercury, as well as Tree of Probabilities, which is also on Mercury. We lost Will of Thousands and Strange Terrain that were both on Mars and some of my favorite strikes where we got to see the likes of Zol and Nocris. For Crucible maps, we lost Emperor's Respite, which was on the Leviathan. We lost Legion's Gulch that was on the EDZ. We lost Retribution, which originally was a PlayStation exclusive on Mars. We also lost Solitude, which is on Mars, as well as Meltdown. That is coming back this year, but we did lose it for quite some time. For Crucible modes, we lost Trials of the Nine, including Gift of the Nine and Honors of the Nine Shader. I get asked all the time, where do you get those shaders? That's where they came from. Also, we lost Countdown that is coming back, as well as Supremacy that also is coming back as well in Guardian Games. For missions, we lost Whisper the Worm, which is still one of the best missions in this game to this day, as well as the original way of getting the Whisper the Worm Catalyst, as well as the Crispy Thousand Wing Ship, that is still one of my most asked questions on how in the world do I get that ship. For raids, we lost the Leviathan, we lost Eater of Worlds, we lost Spire of Stars, we lost the Prestige Leviathan, the Prestige Eater of Worlds, as well as the Prestige Spire of Stars, which a little bit of trivia was the original way that we got things like the Sleeper Simulant Catalyst as well as the Telesto Catalyst. We also lost the original way of being able to get the Legend of Acreus fully upgraded with the Legend of Acreus quest, and then we also lost the Benedict Vendor that was in the tower, which was another way of being able to get Leviathan weapons. We also lost our fair share of exotic quests, so we lost the Sturm and Drain quest on Nessus, we lost the Mita multi-tool and the mini multi-tool quest on the EDZ, we lost the Rat King quest on Titan, we lost the Sleeper Simulant quest as well as the World Line Zero quest on Mars, collecting 35 of 45 memory fragments used to get you the World Line Zero, and then we also lost the Polaris Lance quest that was on Mars as well. For events, we still have Festival of the Lost, but what we did lose is the Haunted Forest, which originally was a play on the Infinite Forest, as well as losing the Faction Rallies, which most people don't even realize existed, but we did used to have the Faction Rallies, and it was the way that we were able to originally get the Graviton Lance Catalyst, the Sweet Business Catalyst, as well as the Sunshot Catalyst. Moving on to Forsaken, we lost the Forsaken Campaign, Ripcade, as well as the Spider NPC. We also lost the Tangled Shore. We lost the Nightclub Lost Sector, if you know, you know. We also had Baron Hunts, which were just kind of an extended thing you could do within the Spider, and it was the original way of being able to get Lord of Wolves for those bounties you pick up from the Spider. In Black Armory, we lost the Valender Forge, we lost Gofanon Forge, we lost the Izanami Forge, as well as Bragugia Forge. We lost a whole slew of Black Armory weapons, which are some of the best weapons still to this day, like the Hammerhead. We also lost the Forge Secret Puzzles that would unlock the Mayrin's Vision, as well as the Sado's Secret, as well as the Rasmussen's Gift. We lost Niobe Labs, still one of my favorite activities ever in the history of Destiny 2. We lost the Mysterious Datapad activity as well, which was a cool quest that took us right back in full circle back into the Niobe Labs activity. In Joker's Wild, or Season the Drifter, we lost Gambit Prime, Rip Gambit. We lost the Gambit Prime set, so you could get the Reaper set, the Invader set, the Collector set, as well as the Sentry set. These are coming back from Zerb, but the intended purpose of them I'm still putting here because originally these were supposed to help you in Gambit Prime. Now they can't, but you still can get these for Transmog for Zerg. We lost the Reckoning, we lost Zero Hour, which is still one of the best missions Bungie's ever made in this game, and that would originally get you Outbreak perfected. We also lost the Invitation of the Nine quest, which is something that we'd pick up from Zur, and it was a cool way of learning more about the Nine. And then we lost the Allegiance quest, where you could choose Allegiance between the Vanguard or to the Drifter, 
And then they never really did anything about it. I still feel like they kind of forgot about this one. In Season of Opulence, we lost the best six-man activity that Bungie's ever made with the Menagerie. We also lost the Chalice, which was the ability to fine-tune and tweak the weapons that you could get. It was the original target farming in the Menagerie that allowed you to get really good rolls within the Menagerie. We lost the Tribute Hall, which was the best way of being able to test our weapons. I still don't understand why this hasn't come back or some similar version of it. We also lost the Bard Ship, which was a gigantic ship that was on the Watcher's Grave, very close to where we go to go see Zer, and you could open up a bunch of treasure chests on top of this ship. Speaking of the Tribute Hall, we also lost the Bad Juju secret mission. Wasn't as secret as Whisperer Outbreak, but this still was a pretty cool mission. This was the original way that we got Bad Juju. Speaking of quests, we also lost the Ace of Spades quest. We lost the Last Word quest. We lost the Thorn quest that ended with Chasm of Screams, for those who remember. We lost the Luminous quest. We lost one of my favorite quests, which was the Izanagi's Burden quest, or originally the Mysterious Box. In terms of raids, we lost Scourge of the Past. That was the original way of getting the Always on Time Sparrow that a lot of you see in the kiosk as well as the Crown of Sorrows, which dropped the legendary Taraba that a lot of you guys I'm sure have seen at least maybe in the Crucible, if not in PvE as well. In terms of events, we did lose the Revelry Easter event. It was actually the original way that we got the Arbalest, and we did eventually also lose the Crimson Days event too, which was our Valentine's Day event, and you could run doubles in Crucible, and it was a fun way of just extending the grind, and you could get some cool weapons from it as well. In terms of Crucible maps, we lost Equinox, which was in the Unknown Space. We lost Firebase Echo, which was on Nessus. We lost the Gambler's Ruin that was on the Tangled Shore. And we also lost the Citadel that is returning, but as of the recording of this video is not in the game, and that was on the Dreaming City. In terms of strikes, we lost the Hollow Lair Strike that originally gave us the Mindbender's Ambition, as well as losing the Broodholt Strike as well, which originally was a PlayStation exclusive, and then everybody was able to experience the strike later as well. This also was the death of strike-specific loot, so all the way since Destiny 1, we've always had strike-specific loot. For example, in Forsaken, we had Horror's Lease that would drop from the Corrupted, as well as Mindbender's ambition that we were just talking about this ended in shadow keep so when they dropped like the scarlet keep strike on the moon it didn't drop anything from that strike similarly to some of the strikes that came now like in the hypernet current there's not a strike specific piece of loot that drops from the strike anymore so this was the death of strike specific loot bungie please bring it back please in year three of destiny we have the shadow keep campaign we also have the season of undying story that had the vex offensive for those that remember and season of dawn we had the season of dawn story as well as saving saint 14 we also had the empyrean foundation that led to us unlocking trials so those who remember the obelisk and collecting the fractaline that's what we were doing then we also lost another one of my favorite six-man activities which was the sundial not as much recognition as menagerie or dares of eternity but the sundial was fantastic and was a great way of focusing loot and it was an early stage of being able to focus your gear also we lost one of my favorite community puzzles of all time being the corridors of time that led to getting the bastion in season of the worthy we lost the story that came with it we lost the Seraph Tower public events, which I'm sure not a lot of people miss. We lost the really cool board in the bunker that showed the pyramids getting closer every single week. And then we lost the Seraph Bunkers with the EDZ, the Moon, and IO, as well as losing the Rasputin live event that was blowing up the Almighty in the tower. In Season of Arrivals, we lost the story that came with it. We lost the Interference missions, as well as the Contact Pyramid Fleet public events that were on IO, Titan, and the Moon. We also lost the live event in the tower, which was the Traveler fixing itself. It was a really cool event, and then kind of led to like a Fortnite black hole effect. Also for trivia, we lost one of the shortest lived strikes in Destiny history that was the Festering Core. It was an IO and it was introduced when Shadowkeep launched and it was axed right when Beyond Light came out. In terms of Gambit maps, we lost the Cathedral of Scars that was on the Dreaming City as well as the Kells Grave that was on the Tangled Shore. We unfortunately have still not to this day gotten any more Gambit maps. In terms of exotic quests, we lost the Leviathan's Breath quest, we lost the Devil's Ruin quest, we lost Fourth Horseman's quest, we lost the Ruinous Effigy quest which is still one of my favorite quests of that year, and we also lost the Traveler's Chosen quest as well. Another quest that we lost that wasn't an exotic quest was the Felwinner's Lie and also the door that came with it. If you know what was wrong with that door, let me know in the comments below. We also lost some fan favorite titles when Beyond Light came as well in terms of the ability to complete them. A few of those being things like Blacksmith as well as Reckoner. We'll kind of leave it at those, but there were a decent amount of titles that became very unobtainable when parts of the game were taken away with Beyond Light. In Season of Hunt, we lost the Crow's storyline. We also lost the Harbinger quest, which was how you got Hawkmoon, as well as Wrathborn hunts that I'm sure not too many people miss. We also lost in Season of Chosen the Dead Man's Tail quest, which is the Presage mission. This is coming back in the Exotic Rotator in a couple seasons, but as of now, Presage is gone, and Dead Man's Tail is obtained through Xur. 
We also lost Umbral Engrams very recently, so rip to Umbral Engrams. In Season the Splicer, we lost the Splicer storyline, as well as the Expunge missions, as well as the Override activity. In Season of the Lost, we lost the Astral Alignment, we lost the Shattered Realm, we lost the Agar Scepter quest, which was a week-to-week -week quest, which led up to us getting Agar Scepter and a pretty cool mission at the end of it. And then lastly, we lost the mission that we got to free Sabathun on before the Witch Queen dropped, and that was a really cool mission as well. In Witch Queen, Bungie made a lot of our favorite materials irrelevant by making it where the materials that we could normally turn in for materials was no longer valid, so we used to be able to take phase glass needles and turn them in for legendary shards or glimmer, but those days unfortunately ended, so a lot of those materials became sunset. In Season of the Risen, we lost the story that came with it. We also lost the Vox Obscura quest that did lead to you getting dead messenger. This is something that is coming back in the exotic rotator in a few seasons, but as of now, you're not able to play it. We also lost a few of the PsyOps Battleground activities. In Season of the Haunted, we lost the Nightmare storyline. We lost the Nightmare Leviathan that we used to have access to as a patrol space. We lost the Containment Protocol event, as well as the weekly Sever mission. In Season of the Plunder, we lost the story that came with it. We lost the ability to go to the Elixney Quarter. We lost the Expedition activity that I'm not sure if anybody missed, but we did lose it. We also lost the pirate hideout missions as well as the catch crash activity. In Season of the Seraph, unfortunately, we did lose the dog, but luckily I was able to pick up this little guy. But in all seriousness, we lost the story that came with the Season of the Seraph. We lost the dog, as I mentioned. We lost a few of the Heist Battlegrounds. We lost the Operation Seraph Shield exotic quest that was the way of getting the Revision Zero. We also missed the Season of the Seraph finale mission that led to a showdown with Aramis, as well as one of the best cutscenes of all time, and the travel rising into the sky. It was a crazy moment and we no longer can play it. So all in all, you've seen that Bungie has removed a lot of activities and content out of the game. My question to you is, is it still worth it to play Destiny 2 in its current state? Thank you guys for watching. Love you guys.